Good morning, students, and welcome back to day number two of NIM in the war effort. Let's continue. NIM went over to the cabinet in the dining room and picked up the cigar box she used for her Chinese school supplies. See, grandfather, I have my brushes, ink box, and books all ready. She looked hopefully at her grandfather. How about four o'clock? Grandfather hesitated. Homework done, he asked. All done. Here is my calligraphy lesson. 345 then, said Grandfather gruffly. Nim smiled broadly. Thank you, Grandfather. I'll be home on time. Hmm, it's a really challenging word there, calligraphy. What do you guys think calligraphy means? And it, might there be a clue in the picture? Hmm. If you're still not sure, calligraphy might be your word of the day. If you're not sure, why don't you look that up and see if you can make the connection between the picture and the word. Grandfather helped Nim carry her rickety red wagon down the stairs to the sidewalk. She loaded a small bundle of newspapers and her school books onto the wagon and started up Sacramento Street. Hmm, that might give us a clue where the setting might be, Sacramento Street. Now, I do realize that a lot of streets um, in certain towns um, are not exactly the same town that the streets are in, but I know from a personal connection that Sacramento is in California. I know that because, well, that's where my dad and my sister live. So I don't know for sure, but right now my guess is they're somewhere in California. Let's see if I'm right. Again, I'm always looking for clues as I'm reading. The wagon made creaking noises as she pulled it along. At the corner, Nim could see two large bundles of morning newspapers waiting for Mr. Huang, the newspaper vendor. She looked at them longingly. Hmm. But there's something strange. If I'm thinking that this setting is in California, and especially Sacramento, where I've been a lot, most of the stores, in fact, I can't even think of one store or one restaurant or one building that has Chinese writing on them. So maybe it's not Sacramento. I don't know. I'll have to keep reading. I'm going to keep that in mind as I continue. Two doors away, Mr. Kwan, the butcher, was opening his shop for the day. How may seem song? Good sales, sir, Nim called to him in Cantonese. The butcher nodded as Nim stopped in front of his store. Sorry, he said. I can't give you any more newspapers. I need them to wrap meat. Nim made a sad face, poking at her lower lip. Oh, all right, said the butcher. Here are a few more papers for you, but that's all. Thank you, Mr. Kwan. Nim put the papers on top of her stack in the wagon. Garland Stevenson is going to win the prize, but that's okay, said Nim, because we'll all be helping in the war effort. It really doesn't matter who wins. The butcher threw up his hands. What do I say to my customers? Put the meat in your pocket and carry it home because all the newspapers are needed for the war effort? All right, all right, he grumbled handing Nim a few more papers, but no more, and tell your grandfather I have some fresh oxtails for him. He likes oxtail soup, I know. Mmm, who's hungry? Oxtail soup, anybody? Yeah, I'll pass too. Nim thanked the butcher and looked at her watch. What time is it? She followed his eyes as he looked over to the clock on the far wall. Next to it, was a large photograph of Mr. Kwan's son, George, in an Air Force uniform. Seven o'clock, he replied. Nim adjusted her watch and waved goodbye. She headed up the block to her aunt's flat. But where were the newspapers tied with red string? Nim frowned. Maybe Aunt Nell had forgotten to put them out. Nim stood there for a moment, trying to decide whether to ring the doorbell so early in the morning or to come back after school. Which one do you think she'll do? Let's read one more page for today's reading.
Then she looked down the street and saw Garland Stevenson just disappearing around the corner, pulling a brand new radio flyer wagon full of newspapers. On top of the pile was a large stack tied with red string. Nim set off after him. Garland Stevenson might be twice her size, but he was not going to get her newspapers. Garland had stopped in front of Mr. Wong's stall, which was still boarded up. He looked around to see if anyone was watching and then picked up the two big bundles of morning newspapers. They were heavy and unwieldy, and Garland had trouble putting them in his wagon. When he heard the creaking of Nim's wagon, he took off his uh, gabardine jacket and quickly tried to cover the load. Those are today's papers, said Nim. What's it to you, Miss Know-it-all? said Garland. You can't take them. They belong to Mr. Huang. Well, they're mine now, said Garland. Mr. Wong shouldn't have left them lying on the sidewalk. Then Garland made a fist to threaten Nim. And you better keep your mouth shut. Struggling with his heavy load, Garland pulled his wagon down Sacramento Street. Nim followed him, keeping her distance. And where did you get the papers tied with the red string, she called. You know, my aunt left those for me. Garland mimicked her in a high, shrill voice. And where do you th did you get the papers tied with the red string? He made a face at Nim. That was my really bad impression of Garland with a high, shrill voice. Okay. We see some conflict now in this story, and I'm wondering how it's going to end. Well, please tune in tomorrow, and we'll continue reading Nim and the War Effort.